Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in a sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 145. We will read it responsively by whole verse. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your reign and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your reign. Your reign is an everlasting reign. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. O Lord, you are faithful in all your words and merciful in all your deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. O Lord, you are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. O Lord, you are near to those who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. I invite all children to join the gospel procession. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, 
How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the, the two fish among them all, and all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother of us all. Amen. Amen. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When the church doesn't quite hear the Spirit speaking in the stories we tell, sometimes the Spirit speaks at us from outside in other stories. We're going multimedia today. Stand by. impossible to be a woman you are so beautiful and so smart and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough like we have to always be extraordinary but somehow we're always doing it wrong you have to be thin but not too thin and you can never say you want to be thin you have to say you want to be healthy but also you have to be thin you have to have money but you can't ask for money because that's crass you have to be a boss but you can't be mean you have to lead but you can't squash other people's ideas you're supposed to love being a mother but don't talk about your kids all the damn time you have to be a career woman but also always be looking out for other people. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane, but if you point that out, you're accused of complaining. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be a part of the sisterhood, but always stand out and always be grateful. But never forget that the system is rigged, so find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's too hard. It's too contradictory. And nobody gives you a medal or says, thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. <sighs> I'm just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us. And if all of that is also true for a doll, just representing a woman, then I don't even know. Name the film. Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> the first thing I want to say to men is, if you're thinking, hey, I feel like that sometimes too. There's, yeah, I believe you. Let that be your doorway into empathy and curiosity and not denial and dismissal. Right, men? Empathy, 
for what might be the same, curiosity about what might be different for women, even, even if we can identify with those things as well, from this great monologue by America Ferreira. This weekend, the Episcopal Church is celebrating the 50th, 50th anniversary of the ordination of women in our communion. There has been so much work done to remove some of the contradictory standards that this monologue represents in the church. And there is so much still left to do. It's not enough to give women the title, not enough to put a collar on a woman. There is so much deeper cultural change that needs to happen for us to fully recognize the leadership of women in the church. I have myself seen so many fellow clergy who are women tied up in knots, as the movie says. Not just so people will like them, but just so that they can do their gosh dang jobs as priests, as deacons, and as bishops. And one of the things that I see time and time again that gets women clergy tied up in knots is the precise contradiction of this, that we judge women as weak leaders unless they act like men in leadership, and we judge women as nasty and unlikable when they act like men do. Yeah? And I can't help but read today's gospel through this anniversary that we're celebrating, through what I have heard from other women, clergy, through these contradictions that we still struggle with in our society and in our church. And I've never read this story this way before, but I want to invite you into this familiar thing about the feeding of the 5,000 and ask some questions about what it says about our expectations of what makes a good leader, what counts as masculine and feminine, what counts as men's work and women's work. So this is probably a story almost all of you could kind of t just recite from memory, right? You know the basic beats. There's a problem. Jesus has all these people. Jesus and his disciples have all these people who have followed them. They are overwhelmed. They're tired. They're, Jesus has promised them a vacation, and lo and behold, the office has called. The phone is going off the hood. The phone is buzzing constantly. People need something. We can't get a moment's rest. And even as the day is ending, the disciples are tired. They see the people are hungry. They say, Jesus, send all these people away. They need to eat. And Jesus, perhaps not the most sensitive to his disciples' needs, but hey, that's what being a leader sometimes means too, says, you give them something to eat. Let this be your problem. And then they, I think, have just had it at that point. And they reach for something, I think, deep-seated in them. They reach for what has been told to them about what it means to be a leader and what it means to be a man. What is their response to this problem? What is the place that they go to right away? We don't have 200 denarii of money to buy enough bread for all these people. They literally step into the role of breadwinner, that masculine role of breadwinner. They get practical, they get financial. They get hard, and you can hear the aggression and anger in their voice, I think. Because anger is the one emotion men are permitted to display publicly, right? <laughs> They're expressing a manly sort of leadership, getting into the concrete and practical details. And I can hear Jesus kind of sighing when they get into that space, like, okay, dudes, chill. Let's start first, let's just start with 
not talking about what you don't have. Let's start with what you, you do have. What do we got? What do we have to work with? Five lures, two fishes. Okay, good. Next step. And here's the important thing. Here is the critical thing about this story. Is a one sentence that's terribly mistranslated. So when we read this story, it says, he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. Horrible. Horrible translation. It sounds like he's like, tell, tell them to sit, you know, like they're dogs or something. <laughs> Here is what Jesus actually told them to do. Get the people not to sit down, but to recline. Recline, because that is the posture that you assume when you're having a formal dinner with people. When you go over to somebody's house and you're at the dining table. In Roman society, we didn't sit, they didn't sit in chairs, they reclined on couches and ate kind of luxuriously like this, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what he's saying to them. Get them to recline. And not just recline in groups, the word is symposiums. Everyone remember, like, Philosophy 100, if you ever took that class, symposiums in, like, Greek society? These were casual dinner parties where people discussed important ideas. You have your friends over, let's talk about the issues of the day, and, you know, eat some cheese, right? <laughs> talk about things that really matter. Connect with your friends. Symposium. It's this nice gathering of, you know, the wine and the ideas are flowing. And then finally, the green grass. So here's the thing about Mark. Mark is a man of few words, or a woman of few words. He doesn't get into, like, nice little details like this. This is one of the few examples where he specifies it's green grass. This is a luxurious place. This is a place of rest. This is a place that recalls Psalm 23. Verdant pastures. This is Galilee State Park, maybe. <laughs> Get the people to recline in symposiums on the green grass. Create the atmosphere of an elegant dinner party. Because, dear disciples, dear men, doing things like that is also showing good leadership. Leadership also means knowing how to play hostess, how to be homemaker, how to be nurturer and includer and a calming presence. And men in leadership need to develop and show those kinds of skills every bit as much as the practical, the hard, the financial, concrete skills that we often associate with being in charge. Because look what happens next in the story. When the disciples are told, and Jesus invites them to play hostess to this grand dinner party out on the grass, what happens next? Now, just like in the raising of Jairus' daughter a few weeks ago, if you were here for that, Mark doesn't tell us the mechanism of the miracle. He doesn't say that then God came down and rained bread on the people. What actually happens next is very much left up to our imaginations of, what, of what, how, where that bread and fish came from. So here's a possibility. If you like the idea of God raining bread down, you can hold on to that. Here's another way we might read this story. You get all these hungry people, anxious, they know it's getting late, you get all of them, Relax, to chill. Please, have a seat. Recline on this green grass. Get, get to know your neighbor. Let's start talking, right? It's all going to be all right. Get people to calm down. And then you take your five loaves and your two fish, and you start passing them around to people. And then the people who are relaxed and calm and getting to know one another start pulling out their knapsacks, the food that they probably brought with them on this journey, and they start pulling out bread and fish, the food that they've got. They start sharing from what they have, and suddenly there is more than enough for everybody. And that happens because the disciples developed a new set of leadership skills. 
This kind of story helps us break apart that impossible contradic contradiction that we place women leaders in, that contradiction of you have to lead like a man, but don't be like a man. Because that contradiction actually starts with us, my fellow men. It's the contradiction that we carry, a contradiction against our true selves. It starts with the things we have always been told about what makes a man a man. Being hard, aggressive, practical, strong. There's nothing wrong with those things. But, number one, those qualities don't only belong to men. Those qualities don't only belong to men. And, number two, why limit ourselves to that narrow scope of what it means to be a leader and what it means to be a human being? God created each of us as whole human beings, each fully, each and every one of us fully the image of our Creator, each fully capable of the ways, all the ways of being in the world, practical, inspirational, emotional, aggressive, nurturing, hard, soft, strong, receptive, protecting, including. These are not contradictions. These are qualities we see God displaying in all the scriptures. These are skills that every good leader knows how to use. These are our divine inheritance. Women's liberation, my fellow men, is our liberation too. And I'm sorry if nobody has told you that before now. Liberation, it's our liberation to be fully human, fully who God has created us to be. One last note, something that's always bugged me about this particular version of the feeding of the 5,000 is the way it ends. Do you know all, you might have noticed all along, it's saying the people, right? The people, the people, the people. And then you get to the very end to kind of, you know, it's the punctuation mark at the end. It says 5,000 who were fed? Men. Men. Why? And this is the thing, is that Mark very, very specifically used the word men when he could have used the more gender-inclusive word. Why just men. This is a stretch. I know this is a stretch, but I'm going to keep reading it this way and until somebody tells me that I'm wrong, and probably that won't even matter. <laughs> Here's why, how I take it. It's because the men experienced that miracle that day in a deeper way. Because what they saw, those 5,000 men, is that they saw 12 other men being a different kind of leader, being men who defied society's roles, being men who displayed their full humanity and thereby ac accomplished amazing things, accomplished impossible things, just by expanding what they thought that they had to do as men and as leaders. This is what's necessary for liberation, for women's liberation, for men's liberation, for everyone's liberation, is men showing other men, showing boys, the fullness of who God created all of us to be. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit and open our eyes to see your glory shining from the sky above, from the earth below, and from every creature. We invite those online to type your prayers of joy and gratitude into the chat, and they will be read aloud. The on-site congregation gives thanks today for raindrops, car shows for dad, Olympians who join together from all across the globe, family, safe travels, music at St. G's, our new organist, James, and for Father Dan's amazing sermon, thank you. The online congregation gives thanks today for? For Father Dan's message, for medical professionals, for recovery from an eye infection, and for cats. <laughs> we give silent thanks in our hearts. We pray to the Spirit, come, come and make, make us new. new. Come, divine breath, and fill us with life, even when we are afflicted in mind, body, spirit, and conscience. We invite those online to type your prayers of intercession into the chat, and they will be read aloud. Today, we pray for those on our parish prayer list, including Ron Thomas, Bobby, Ron Falb, Susie Porter, the on-site congregation offers prayers today for the U.S. service members as peacekeepers in areas of conflict, the Israel and Gaza populations, children on the streets of Chicago, Michiko, Linda Singleton, Kay, Marilyn Nealens, Joyce and Michael, Ed and Melissa, Nick, David Burlett and strength for his wife, Marcy, Carolyn, Lori, the people of Ukraine, and the people of Israel. The online congregation offers prayers today for? For Barbara, Carol, the Hoffman family, the Hunter family, Janess, Tyler, Ian, Giovanni, Philip, John Duback, and Tom Cannon. For Crystal, Michael, and Sarah, for Alex, for Sharon and Ray, for Lindsay, Carrie, and Susan, for Brent Smith, for Bobby, Anne, and Kathy. We offer silent intercessions in our hearts. We pray to the Spirit, come and, and give us life. Life. Come, fiery dove, and guide us boldly through death itself to eternal life. We invite those online to type your prayers for the dead into the chat, and they will be read aloud. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list, including Sue Custon and Mark Jacobson. The on-site congregation offers prayers today for Betty, Charles, Danny, and Dr. Bill, Derna, Susan, William, Andrew, Evelyn, Roy, and Betsy Shaw. The online congregation offers prayers today for? For Tommy, John Bach, 
Tommy Trotter, John, Skip, and Dave, for Jeffrey, for Ralph, Mary, and Celia Foltz, for Michael Hoffman, and for Chris. We hold our beloved dead silently in our hearts. We pray to the Spirit, come, come and raise us up. up. Come, wisdom and compassion, and give us courage to confess our failings and to walk in your ways of justice, love, and truth. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us, us most, most merciful God. God. In, in your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things, things done and left undone. And, and so uphold us, us O Holy Spirit, Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, grant us forgiveness of our sins and strength to work and to pray for all people according to their need, that we, burning with the Spirit's endless fire, may radiate Christ's unquenchable grace to the ends of the earth and the end of the age. Amen. Amen. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, we give you humble thanks for the witness and ministry of all women and girls in your holy and broken church, for the generations who have served faithfully but in whom the church refused to recognize your spirit's call to ordination, for the 11 women and their communities who 50 years ago courageously defied the rules and were ordained to the priesthood before the rest of the Episcopal Church caught up, for the innumerable gifts that women bishops, priests, and deacons have given to this communion and the wider world, for the gifts and callings still to be revealed and empowered. Guide us, O Holy Spirit, to pull apart the stubborn and sinful structures that subordinate women and girls in our church, our nation, and our world. Renew our zeal, O Jesus, to seek and serve you in all persons and to respect the dignity of every human being. Gather us, O Creator, into that blessed banquet where all feast and serve equally according to the image by which you made us and sustain us now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, peace everyone. Peace. 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 peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace everybody. Peace, Susie, especially. Peace, peace Dad. Peace. Love you. Love you. What a sermon. Absolutely. That was Please so be seated. Wonderful. Uh, before, uh, before we do birthdays, etc., we are going to formally welcome our new organist, James, to our parish. Friends, we have come here today to welcome James Jansen, our new organist. James, do you, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourself to the ministry of organist of St. Gregory's Episcopal Church and glorify God through the gift of music? I do. Will you, all of you who witness this new beginning, support and uphold James in this ministry? We will! O oh God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servant James, who seeks through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth. Grant to your people even now glimpses of your beauty and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome, James. And now, birthdays, anniversaries, and those who are traveling this week. Oops, what? Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Nancy. May God, who wonderfully and beautifully created you, continue to pour out the blessings of this life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, amen.
And friends, may the road rise up to meet you, may the wind be at your back and the skies be clear. Wherever you go in this world, continue to carry the love of Christ and the love, the light of Christ, and the love of Christ, and the love and light of this community with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, amen. amen. Happy travels. And let us all walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel's children to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to gather before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, we remember his death. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, bring all things into the reign of your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are invited to the feast prepared from the foundation of the world. I come with joy to meet. 
Let us pray. God of abundance, for some quick announcements. Good morning. My name is Sarah Kettlewell, and I'm a member of the Vestry Leadership here at St. Gregory's. If this is your first Sunday with us, thank you very much for joining us today. We would love to get to know you better. I invite you to fill out one of these welcome cards and either place it in the basket at the back or hand it to me. I will be standing at the back of church after service, and I would love to meet you. Also, we had a vestry meeting last week, and I'm here to give a few brief updates. First, as a vestry, we continue discussing the group needs model to help us focus on togetherness and also making sure we're serving our broader community. We Financials remain strong. Thank you all for your generous contributions. And great. Um, we continue to do a lot of work behind the scenes for major initiatives that are going on, but we don't have any significant updates to share at this time. If you have any questions, I'll be at the back if you need to talk to me. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lori Libielski. I'm co-chair of the Rector Discernment Committee here at St. Gregory's. Um, first, thank you to all who have participated in our small group listening sessions over the month of July. Today is your last opportunity to do that. We have plenty of room in the session, so if you didn't sign up but still would like to come, please join us. I think we're in Founders Hall. I'm not sure. Um, I will confirm that, but just see me, find me. Um, we'll start at about 1045, and we'll be done uh, around noon. So I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah and Lori Lee. Um, friends, the summer wanes quickly, unfortunately. But good news is we are ramping up to a really fabulous program year. So I just want to highlight a few things that are coming up already in August. First, uh, for college students and grad students who are home and will be heading back to school in the next few weeks, um, all through August on Sundays, we'll have special during like the birthdays, anniversaries, and travel. We'll also have a prayer ready for any uh, students who are going back to school. Um, you know, if it's the Sunday before you're going back, come on up. We'll bless you. We'll we'll love you, and we'll say goodbye to you, and uh, wish you to see you again next summer. August 18th, we'll have blessing of the backpacks for those who are going to school around here. Um, if you're in college and have a backpack and want to bless, we can do that too. Don't worry about that. Um, August 18th, blessing the backpacks. August 19th is the first day of school here in Deerfield. We will continue St. Gregory's fabulous tradition of having a hospitality table out on Deerfield Road uh, to welcome students at Willamont and Caruso. If you can help with that on the morning of August 19th, there is a sign-up sheet in the sign-up center. Please add your name to that. August 25th, uh, we'll have Mass on the Grass out in our memorial courtyard, um, uh, as well as it's a joyful noise Sunday, so the music is going to be fabulous. And we're going to have an end of the summer cookout. We're actually going to do it on the lawn near Deerfield. You know why? So people can actually see us and know that we are an amazing community, and they might want to be a part of a community like this. That's August 25th. Um, Sign-ups for helping with that, are they available in the sign -up center today? Not yet. Okay, Not yet. Soon. soon. So come back and uh, in the email, you think, this week? Yes. Yes, in the email. Look for that um, for bringing dishes and helping with the grilling. And then finally, September 8th, St. Gregory Day is the launch of our 2024-2025 program year. It's the first Sunday of our new children's classroom. We'll have a town hall for uh, updating you on the record discernment process. And then the following Sundays will also be the launch of new adult formation programming after church. So lots of exciting things coming up. Hope you can be part of it. Let's stand for the final blessing. 
Friends, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>